Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to United Methodist Church, 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. It is a beautiful day today, and hopefully the farmers are well on their way to getting their crops in. We thank God for the bountiful harvest. Halloween is almost here. We'll be setting up today after church and handing out goodies on October 31st from four to seven. So if you have kids or grandkids, or you just wanna see what kind of costumes the kids are wearing, you're welcome to come. We have an ad board meeting tomorrow night here at the church at six o'clock. So if you'd like to come, if you're part of the committees, or if you'd like to see what's going on in the church, you're welcome to come at six o'clock. Our charge conference is next Sunday, November 3rd, 2 o'clock at Rantoul United Methodist Church. So again, if you're interested in the workings of the church, you're welcome to come to Rantoul. If you'd like a name read for All Saints Sunday, please let Pastor Ashley know. And do you want to explain about that? Sure. Um, All Saints Sunday, if you're not familiar with it, is a Sunday in the church where we take the opportunity to remember and honor those who have passed away. So if you would like a name read to um, be honored and remembered, if, if the person who passed away within the past year, um, who was in your life, who was important to you, um, we'll have this as part of our service next week, and you'll have an opportunity, if you're here, uh, to come forward and to light a candle in their memory. Um, if you'd like a name read, but you're not able to be here, that is fine. We will have someone come forward and light uh, a candle in their memory for you. So if, I sent an email earlier this week. Um, if you'd like me to read a name, and you don't tell me, um, you can tell me later in the week, let's say, please either call or text me, or like if you want me um, to give me a name today, if you please write it down on a piece of paper for me. So I can make sure I have the correct spelling and everything for when I create the slides for next Sunday. So there are slips of paper on our table in the back that you can use, um, or you can text me later. So I just want to make sure I get all spellings correct and all of that. So that will be next Sunday, November 3rd, as part of our regular worship service. So um, again, if, even if you're not able to be here in person, we can still read that loved one's name and like a candle in their honor. Next Sunday is Communion Sunday, and as is our custom in our church, we do take an offering up at the communion rail as we take communion, and each month it goes to a different organization. November's alms will go toward the food pantry here in Cessna Park. So just a reminder that if you do come to church next Sunday and God leads your heart into it, please don't be afraid to donate to the um, to the food pantry. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? In your bulletin, you have the Reach Across America form. Last year, approximately 2 million wreaths were placed on the graves of veterans, not only nationwide, but uh, overseas cemeteries also. Sister Park Legion is one of less than a dozen 
in the state of Illinois that make sure that every grade in these eight cemeteries that we can identify as veteran has a So uh, fill out the form, either mail it to the address at the bottom, or you can drop it off at Loman Ray Insurance. Somebody there will take it. There's also a remembrance ceremony attached to that. I don't. Yeah. So, even if you don't partic participate in laying of the wreaths, um, you can please come to the ceremony. It, it's a nationwide ceremony, and the information is there on the flyer in your bulletin. Okay. There are no other announcements. We have a special treat to begin our worship this morning. Ellen Bork is joining us today. And Ellen, what grade are you in? Third grade. She is in third grade here in Christmas Park. Um, so she is carrying Linda's neighbor, and she asked if she could come this morning and sing the Star Spangled Banner for us. Wow. So I would like to invite Ellen to come forward, and she's going to, would you like a microphone? So this is Ellen, and she is just singing for us. She was singing. No. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we held at the twilight as we lived through the stars and bright stars. Now please stand as you are able and sing hymn number 600, Wonderful Words of Life. The words will be on the screens as well as in your red hymnal. Thank you. 
You may be seated. Please join us in the call to worship as found in the bulletin and up on the screen. Jesus is in our midst. Jesus, our healer, deliverer, and friend, is here. We have heard so many good things about him, but we long to meet him, to encounter him ourselves. Call out to him and do not be silent. Like Bartimaeus, shout to him and do not allow anyone to silence your voice. Cry out and tell Jesus what you need. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. We need a touch from you. Touch me, touch us in our need, which we lift right now in our hearts. In this time of worship, celebrate God's goodness. In this time of celebration of worship, Know that Jesus touched your place of need. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, we will take a moment um, in a moment of centering. So I will pray our centering prayer aloud, and I invite you to please be, just feel the Lord's presence in us this morning. Lord God, our provider, we come up our joys and our concerns that we have as a church family, um, as uh, the body of Christ. We know prayer is powerful, so I would like to ask if there are prayers of challenge or prayers of joy we'd like to recognize today. Leslie. I feel joy because there is a new church today. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mary, we love seeing your face. We're glad you're here. My family was able to get together on Wednesday, our hat day, and celebrated my dad's 94th and a fourth <laughs> birthday. We were unable to get together on his actual birthday in July due to COVID, but this time we were, we were all there. 
all seven of us siblings were able to get together with dad and with others just to be together, to visit, to celebrate, and it was a wonderful time. So thank God for that. That is wonderful. What a joy. It was a joy that Ellen came here this morning to sing for us. So thank you very much. Seeing no others, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and merciful God, we give you thanks for this wonderful day. To be able to gather together and worship you, Lord, um, in complete freedom. To praise your name, to pray together, to communicate with you, we're just so, so very grateful. And with that, Lord, you are a God who knows us and loves us so well and so intimately that you hear each and every one of our prayers. Our prayers of joy, our prayers of concern, so we want to take a moment to offer them to you this morning. Lord, we have, we have lots of joy to be thankful for. For our singing this morning with Ellen, for seeing Mary Noonan back in church today, for Jerry Hayes' great result from her test, and for Mary's family being able to gather together to celebrate. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks and praise. And Lord, we also want to praise you for being our sovereign God, and there is so much happening in our country and in our world today. We lift all of those concerns to you. We're just grateful that you are God because you are sovereign and you are all knowing and you are in control. So Lord, we give you thanks for this. We lift all those who are hurting today who may be suffering. We lift all those who have unspoken requests, joys, concerns, and we give them over to you, Lord. So gracious God, we give you thanks. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now please stand as you are able and sing hymn number 454 in the Red Book, Open My Eyes That I May See, words are also going to be in the monitors. You may be seated. 
And now as Sue plays through to the doxology, please keep your, um, your mind and your heart in an attitude of gratitude for what God has given us. Today's Gospel reading is from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. They came to Jericho as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the word of the Lord. Please join me in prayer. Open our eyes, Lord Jesus, to the world around us. Show us what we should see, but from which we hide our eyes. Show us how people live in this world and the reality of their days. Give us courage to do what you ask and to let us see as you do. Open our eyes, Lord Jesus, to the shape of your kingdom. Show us what life could be like if only we could see in wisdom. Show us what we could do to change things forever with you. Give us courage to have a vision and to let us see as you do. Open our eyes, Lord Jesus, to the people all around us. Show us what we should see, but what we fail to notice. Show us what people are saying to us and what they long for. Give us courage to be where you are and to let us see as you do. In the name of Christ, amen. About a month and a half ago, we learned that our daughter needed glasses. She started off the school year this year squinting at the board in the classroom and when she needed to see things far away. So we took her to the eye doctor and sure enough that morning she was trying on new styles of glasses and leaving with a pair that day. Now aren't those cute? Like I think she's got really, really good taste but I'm also biased. <laughs> She got to pick them out all on her own, and she's gotten used to them by now and actually really likes them now. But what happened after we left the doctor that day is what 
really stuck in my mind. As we got into the car and I started driving, she said, Mom, I can see the leaves on the tree. They have designs. Look at all the colors out there. I can see them. It was like a whole new world was opening up to her again. And she was like she was seeing for the first time. Now, as her, her vision had slowly worsened over time before the glasses, she got used to seeing fewer and fewer details because it was a slow, gradual change. Those small details slowly blended into the background, not vying for her attention anymore. So it made me think about when the last time was when we all really intentionally looked at the small details that may go unseen or unnoticed in our lives. Like the fresh smell of rain. Did anyone notice that smell this week when we got that little bit of rain? It really struck me. The vibrancy of colors outside on a beautiful fall day. Or what about the vibrancy of the trees before they turn the fall colors and lose their leaves? Those hues are noticeable too. The clearness of the sky when no clouds are present or very few clouds are present. Or what about the shapes of the clouds in the sky? When was the last time you played that game where you tried to see shapes in the clouds? Or maybe, what about the spark that we used to see in a friend's eyes that possibly has dimmed a little bit due to life circumstances? Or what about the person who's struggling to eat or provide for their family but is dubbed as someone who might be taking advantage of the system? So I'll ask all of us today, when was the last time we took a walk or took a ride around our community to notice the things that may go unseen now. I want to encourage everyone this week to do just that. The weather has been beautiful. Take a walk, take a ride around the neighborhood and look for the unseen. Look for those details that may have been blending into the background a little bit. I want all of us to be aware of what God brings to our attention when we intentionally look. Like in today's gospel reading from Mark, we learned about Bartimaeus, who was not someone who was going to go unseen by Jesus. So in verses 46 and 47, it said, As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, I wonder how long it took for Bartimaeus to become unseen or unnoticed in that community. I'm thinking it had probably been a long time because he's a character where we know his name and we know his family name. His lineage designated him as the son of Timaeus. He was a blind beggar who was sitting by the roadside that day, probably expecting to be ignored. And I say that because the scripture says when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out. So he started shouting out and calling out for mercy once he heard it was Jesus coming his way. <laughs> Now, Bartimaeus was someone who had been dropped from people's vision, pushed to the margins of the community as he sat begging on the roadside. He began to blend into the surroundings, and it wasn't until Jesus came that the negative attention came back on Bartimaeus. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, and he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on you. They, the people in the crowd, or from the community, told him to be quiet. They told him to keep to the margins, to stay away, to not interrupt, to be unseen, and blend in again. But he kept on shouting, 
for Jesus. And he got even louder. Now maybe there have been times we felt like Barnabas, struggling to see and feel seen by others. Or struggling maybe to hear and have our own voice heard. Or struggling to know and to feel known. Or maybe there have been times that we feel like the crowd, not paying attention or noticing those details because we are used to them or desensitized. Now, I'm not saying this to shame anybody. Sometimes we not, may not pay attention or not notice those details because we feel helpless. Like, what, what could I really do to help? But Jesus noticed Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus' loud shouts, and he stopped to talk with him. And something I love about Jesus is that he's very interrupted. There are so many stories in the Gospels where we read that Jesus and his disciples were on their way somewhere, and they got interrupted. But these interruptions turn into teachable moments. The word about Jesus has to be getting around, because the text tells us that Bartimaeus heard it was Jesus coming. Remember, he was blind. He didn't know what Jesus looked like. Bartimaeus just knew about him and knew that he needed to get Jesus' attention. And he was successful. Scripture goes on to tell us, so throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? Now notice Jesus didn't ask Bartimaeus, What's wrong? Why are you unhappy? Why are you sitting by the side of the road and begging? Now, if, if you read through the Gospels, Jesus doesn't tend to ask what's wrong. He more often than not asks, what would make it right? Or what do you want me to do for you? Like in Bartimaeus' case. And Bartimaeus didn't seem to hesitate. The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Let me see again. Not solve all my problems or make these bad circumstances or bad people go away. He said, let me see again. Bartimaeus had agency. He had the ability to decide, to determine, to choose. Bartimaeus didn't ask for all his problems to be taken away or to have a perfect life. He decided to call out to Jesus. He determined to keep calling and not stay silent, even though there were those who tried to silence him. And he chose to ask Jesus to let him see. Verse 52 says, Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Jesus gave Bartimaeus back his sight and said, Go, your faith has made you well. But Bartimaeus decided to follow Jesus. He knew Jesus was the way to go and that he needed to continue to follow him. Let me see. Maybe that can be our cry, too. Our prayer and our hope. Maybe a new spiritual discipline is forming right now for us. Like I kind of mentioned earlier, I want to encourage everyone to take a walk or a ride around the neighborhood this week. Think about what you see, what catches your attention, what shouts that you may have heard. What you are noticing again of new. Pray to God, let me see, and to open your eyes to the familiar, to see it in a whole new way. And then be prepared to act when Jesus opens your eyes to something that needs attention. Because then, instead of being like the ones that try to silence Bartimaeus, we can choose to be like the ones that sent Bartimaeus. Take heart. He is calling you. Take heart. This message is for you. Take heart. This hope is for you and for me and for all. We all have blindnesses that need healing from God. 
We need to hear the voice of Jesus calling to us and asking us what we need. Let me see Jesus so I don't hoard your hope or your message. Let me see so I can walk with you in your will. When we ask Jesus to let us see and commit to walking with him, what it teaches us is that we are not the ones guiding the path. We are not the ones deciding where and how to go. We've surrendered that. We've surrendered that responsibility when we've decided to follow him. And he will open our eyes and help us see again. Let's pray together around this time. And as we pray, we're going to do it a little differently. Please respond in prayer with the bold print I have on the screen. Mighty Jesus, when we want to be a church ever reforming, yet cling to comfortable ways, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. When we want to honor your still speaking voice, but are fearful of insights which challenge old assumptions, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. When we want to live into Jesus' dream of oneness, but fail to listen to voices of difference, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. Take heart, get up. Jesus is calling to us. We trust in the one who has guided the church for two millennia. Through Christ, God forgives us our failings and continues to call us into a community of mutual love and forgiveness. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us see. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us see. Glory to God. Amen. Our final hymn we'll be singing this morning is My Hope is Built. It is number 368 in your red hymnals, and the words will be on the screen. I invite you at this time to please stand as you're able.
to neighbors known and unknown. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for being blessed. <laughs> Thank you.